All the matter around us is best described by the theory of quantum mechanics. However, solving quantum equations for many particle systems, like materials or drugs, has proven too difficult for any transistor-based computer we could ever build. Hi, I'm Mark Ritter, and I'd like to tell you how we can flip this. We can employ devices based on quantum mechanics, called qubits, to perform calculations that we never thought possible. The quantum realm is governed by two rules. First, a physical system in a perfectly definite state can still behave randomly. This is due to superposition. The system can be in two states simultaneously. Second, perhaps even stranger, two systems that are too far apart to influence each other can nevertheless behave in ways that, though individually random, are somehow strongly correlated. This is due to entanglement. Information is spread across the two systems. Quantum computing is about working out how to use these two principles in a new model of computation. I will focus on technologies for universal quantum computing, the only type of quantum computing with a proven advantage, and will not discuss annealers or analog quantum simulation. Universal quantum systems can execute any algorithm, and we are currently at the noisy, intermediate-scale quantum or NISC computer stage. There is an improvement path from NISC machines to fault-tolerant machines by adding error correction, but the resource overhead is very large. A variety of qubit technologies have been demonstrated, including superconducting qubits, Trapped ions are neutral atoms like beryllium, calcium, or ytterbium ions. Engineered defects like phosphorus and silicon, nitrogen vacancy centers in diamond or dimers in silicon carbide. Spins or quantum dots, which are single electrons. I will discuss specific examples of these technologies, and there are other qubit technologies that I do not have time to discuss like photons. A unit radius sphere called the Bloch sphere describes the state of well-defined technologies that possess two states, zero and one. A qubit can be manipulated by electromagnetic pulses, which we call one qubit gates, to be in superposition, a linear combination of these two states defined by a point on the Bloch sphere. For example, the red point on the positive x-axis is an equal combination of zero and one. Electromagnetic pulses cause two qubits to interact and become entangled, but the state of two qubits is beyond what we can represent in three dimensions. A quantum circuit can be graphically described by horizontal lines, each representing the state of a qubit in time, with a series of one and two qubit gates in a particular sequence, followed by measuring or sampling the qubit states as represented by the pink squares. Any algorithm can be constructed from one and two qubit gates, but the depth or number of sequential gates that can be applied is limited by noise and quantum and classical crosstalk. Ion qubits employ ground state energy levels of an ion for qubit states, like the 2s states of this isotope of ytterbium. Ions must first be loaded into an RF electromagnetic trap in ultra-high vacuum. Lasers of different wavelengths, depending on the ion, are used to move the trapped ion out of metastable non-computational states, like the F and D states in this example. Then the ions are cooled to microkelvin temperatures by a laser tuned to a Raman transition, so they are not vibrating in the trap. Laser pulses around 350 nanometers, higher energy than the SP transition, are used for single qubit gates, and two qubit gates are affected by co-propagating laser pulses striking two ions, causing them to vibrate, then make a transition absorbing the vibration and changing their joint state to cause entanglement. This is called a Mollmer-Sorensen gate. Finally, the ions are measured by exciting the SP transition with DC laser light. Those ions in the one state fluoresce and are detected by a camera. Those in the zero state are dark. Ion traps are now made from 3D silicon containing RF electrodes and regions where the ions can be shuttled back and forth by surface electrodes connected down through the structure to pins on the opposite side. The laser beams are parallel to the substrate and orthogonal to the line of ions. Superconducting qubits are nonlinear LC resonators with a Q of greater than a million.
The nonlinear inductor is a Josephson junction, a superconductor insulator superconductor device, which shunts two parallel superconducting plates, forming a lateral capacitor. The lowest two energy levels of this device are used as the qubit. Two qubit interactions are mediated through capacitively coupled transmission lines, which have a different resonant frequency than either qubit. Microwave pulses, typically in the range of 5 to 7 gigahertz, are used to control, entangle, and measure the qubit state. Spin qubits use single electrons trapped in a quantum dot, which in this example is isotopically pure silicon 28, to avoid interference from unwanted nuclear magnetic moments. The left picture shows a series of electrodes used to create the confining potential shown in the center diagram. To distinguish the two electrons, a magnetic field gradient, as shown at the left, is applied parallel to the plane of the substrate, which causes the two electrons to have a different Zeeman energy, as shown in the energy separation of the zero and one states for the left and right qubits at the bottom center. The right diagram shows the gate voltage sequence for quantum operations. The left and right gate voltages are increased in order to load a single electron in the zero state in each well. Tuned RF pulses cause single qubit gates, and the M gate modulates the distance between the two spins for two qubit gates. The spin state is measured by decreasing the gate voltage to unload the left then the right wells. The state is determined by the emptying voltage as determined by a charge pulse detected by a single electron transistor. Engineer defects use an ion embedded in a substrate. In this example, the substrate is isotopically pure silicon 28 to eliminate nuclear moments as with spin qubits. This fabrication method developed by Michelle Simmons and colleagues at the University of New South Wales starts with an epitaxial layer of 28 silicon dipped into hydrofluoric acid to create a hydrogen mask. The sample is placed into an ultra-high vacuum chamber and then selected hydrogen atoms are desorbed with a scanning tunneling microscope. Phosphine gas is then introduced into the chamber to dope the silicon with phosphorus within one atomic position of that desired. Finally, the phosphorus is encapsulated for protection by epitaxial silicon overgrowth. An example of a two-qubit phosphorus atom device is shown in the scanning tunneling microscope image on the left. The right image shows a single qubit consisting of two phosphorus atoms separated by eight lattice constants. The left image shows two qubits separated by roughly 65 nanometers. The light shaded regions are heavily doped phosphorus regions which at 4 degrees Kelvin form metallic lines that connect RF signals controlling the qubits to external circuitry shown schematically. I'll now summarize and compare these technologies. First, quantum computing systems will always require RF and or laser hardware and classical microprocessors to control and measure the qubits. The best technologies, like superconducting qubits and ions, are limited by the two qubit gate fidelity and classical and quantum crosstalk. Note that multi qubit gate fidelities are less than the best two qubit gate fidelities listed in this table. And the RF and laser equipment size, weight, and power is far greater than that of the qubits. Finally, all technologies suffer from signal escape issues because there is no equivalent to Rent's rule. Every qubit needs to be touched by a signal. The second column of the table gives the ratio of coherence time to gate time, which is an approximate measure of how many gates can be executed before the quantum state is lost. The technologies have different issues, variability in frequency for superconducting qubits, scalability of ion traps, and for defects and spins, no viable scaling path for a 2D array of interconnected qubits has been demonstrated. Quantum computing offers great promise to solve some of the hardest computational problems known to man, but much research is required before we see computational benefit.